So this weekend, The Defenders dropped on Netflix. We now have six different seasons inside of the Marvel Netflix universe. And for me, I've been a really big fan of this Marvel Netflix universe with the different, darker, more violent tone and the different types of storytelling they can do that's a lot more local, a little bit more in depth and taking on characters that are a little bit different in the way it plays out as opposed to the MCU. And with this being The Defenders, it's kind of the end of phase one of the Marvel Netflix universe. So this is the perfect time to pause, stop, and rank all six seasons of the Marvel Netflix universe. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in and look at how Rotten Tomatoes rated each one of these. Now, before we go into this, the way that Rotten Tomatoes works in rating TV shows is different from how it works from movies, and they're, they'll rate something not based off the whole season, so just take this as some sort of idea of where it falls. It's not actually as uh, accurate of describing things as the way it does movies, because these aren't ratings of the full season, they're ratings of maybe the first episode, the first four episodes, but it's something to look at to see different opinions. So coming in at sixth place is Iron Fist. Coming in at fifth place is Daredevil C Season 2 was 74%. Iron Fist had 17%. Coming at number 4 was The Defenders with 78%. At number 3 was Jessica Jones with 92%. At number 2 is Luke Cage with 96%. And coming in first place is Season 1 of Daredevil with 98%. So like I said, the way it rates things isn't the most accurate as compared to the way you would view it with movies. So that's where like Daredevil season two being down next to the bottom was pretty surprising to me. If you don't understand how they quite do things, Iron Fist being at the bottom, that tends to line up pretty well with the general consensus. But like also Luke Cage being that high, a lot of people have said that the first half of that season is really good and then it kind of dips down in the second half. If Rotten Tomatoes is only rating the first four, five, six episodes of it, I absolutely see how that would be second place on there. Also, I put a poll up on my Twitter account. You want to go check out my Twitter page if you like my ranking videos. I put up polls each week before I do these videos. And so if you want to uh, kind of be involved in the process of how putting the discussion on here, go ahead and join my Twitter page. You'd see this. So I asked you guys, what's your favorite next Netflix series thus far? This was before the Defenders came out. And even if I'd put it out this weekend, a lot of people wouldn't have been able to watch the whole thing. Coming at with 45 votes counted at the bottom is Iron Fist with just... 2% of the vote coming in at number or coming in fourth or third place with 11% of the vote is Luke Cage coming in at second place with 20% is Jessica Jones and in first place with a definitive definitive lead who is Daredevil with 67% of the vote so quite literally two thirds of the people voted for Daredevil. So there's some different perspectives on it, whether they're looking at Rotten Tomatoes, whether looking at the poll, Daredevil seems to be the one on the top that's the most popular. With that said, I'm gonna dive in and give my quick thoughts on each one of these seasons. Coming in at number six for me is gonna be Iron Fist. Now, I. I know virtually nothing about Iron Fist, the comic book character. I've never read an Iron Fist comic book. I don't think he's even appeared in any graphic novels I've read. So he's kind of one of these guys I've heard of, but I do not know, didn't know anything about going into it. The trailers for it made it look kind of cool, kind of weird. Didn't know who a lot of the cast was in it. And then the first episode kicks off and it starts off weird. Um, just the direction they start to go, even the, just like the first scene of it, uh, doesn't start off with a bang or set a very good tone for where things are headed. And the whole first four episodes of the season is dedicated to Danny Rand trying to prove that he's Danny Rand and it's a custody battles with a big company with kung fu fights thrown in randomly throughout the whole thing. And once it gets going, it gets a little bit better and they starts battling the hand and you start understanding the mythology, the hand and Kung Lao and how all these different pieces fit together. And it kind of gets better as it goes along and some of the fights are, are better than some other ones. But overall, such a weird mixed bag of a show. The lead actor cast is Iron Fist. I, it's not knowing the comic books, I don't know how much of it is his performance and how much of it, how he's written, how much of it, that's just what the character's supposed to be. But he comes off whiny. He doesn't come off like a strong hero character, just very confused. Just a very odd lead character. And of the shows, this is the one that had the least kind of wow moments. In the most, what? What, did, what is this? Just right out of the gate, really, that first episode, I, I watched, rewatched it a few times trying to get my wife to watch through it with me. And I mean, it's it's rough. It, it, it is a very strange direction they took things. 
So this one comes in at the at the bottom. I didn't hate it. I got enough enjoyment out of it. If my wife, wife after watching The Defender, was like, all right, let's watch uh, Iron, uh, Iron Fist, I'd be like, okay. But man, just such so many odd things that they did with it. Just the structure of the story, so much time to custody battles. I think the main, probably the biggest problem is that lead actor seems to be pretty miscast or the character's miswritten to just come off so whiny and non-decisive and things. So unfortunately, that's kind of where I fall on things. Sorry for the interruption. Real quick, I want to talk about something called Movie Pass. Movie Pass is the way I've been going to the movies for the last six months. It's a service where you pay one fee each month. They send you a debit card in the mail. And when you go to the movies, you use their app, select the movie you want to go see. They put money on the debit debit card and that's how you go pay for your movies and you can go see one movie every single day of the month which is an incredible deal. So when I signed up for it, it was $45 and that was a good deal for me at $45. This past week they dropped their price down to $9.99 per month. So for $10 per month, less than the cost of a nighttime movie ticket for most people in most places, you can get a subscription to their service and go see as many movies per month as you want. If you like going to the movies, I can't imagine why you wouldn't sign up for this super service. It's a great deal. It's an insane deal. I don't know how this is going to work, what the finances on their end look like, but for you, you can benefit greatly from this. If you're interested in this, please use the link down below in the description. It does help out my channel. I am an affiliate with them, but I am a user of their service. I am a big fan of their service. It saved me a ton of money, and with this $10 a month deal, it's going to save me an enormous amount of money. So please consider signing up with that link down below. Now let's get back to our video. Coming in at number five is is going to be Luke Cage. Now, before I dive into this, I'll say this. The first half of Luke Cage probably is in the top one or two seasons. I loved the way it kicked off and just, it had a distinct vibe to it. It felt distinctly Luke Cage is in Harlem and so it just had a different tone, a different feel, a different culture to the whole thing. And I loved kind of the direction it went with it and kind of building an idea of intrigue, building this guy's backstory, the undercover world with the characters in it. I'm really a big fan of the first half of the season. The lead actor is so cool and so much charisma. You just love seeing him on screen. So many of like the side characters in it, the main villain, uh, Cottonmouth, just such a like a great performance. Uh, all these memorable characters, even shades and the weird eeriness to him. And then about halfway through the season, uh, one of the main cast members gets killed off, kind of turns in a different direction. There's like a new main villain kind of comes into it and it just gets de derail so fast. It gets corny. Uh, the plot lines aren't as good or the, in the main drive of everything isn't as good and just goes so far into a campy zone kind of out of nowhere. And it, you can literally every, you can read so many reviews that all pinpoint the exact same moment when this happens just huge shift in the tone, nature of it, the quality of all of it, and it drops down. Still, even that second half is probably better than Iron Fist, but it's right on that same quality level with Iron Fist in my mind, whereas the first half, the quality's way here up at the top. Um, so this is one's the most mixed bag of the season of. The first half is great. It's just as good as anything else in the Marvel Netflix universe. I enjoyed it just as much. And the second half is kind of a perfect example of kind of where Marvel Netflix stuff goes bad. So that, that was kind of my take on it. A lot of great stuff, a lot of not so great stuff. Coming in at number four for me is going to be Jessica Jones. So Jessica Jones, I think um, uh, the, the main actress, the main cast to it, I thought was all great. The general idea of it, um, just uh, of, of a character with superpowers that doesn't want to be a hero, isn't a bad person, but not really a good person either, but struggling for post-traumatic stress disorder and the ideas explored with that. I think all that is excellent. Very cool. My main issues with this one is the main plot and story structure of the season um, was very odd to me. So it starts off the first two or three episodes. It's like a private eye show and it sets up a few pieces of where things are going. And as soon as the Kilgrave plotline really kicks into gear and he actually shows up and interacting, it just kind of goes off in this whole other direction and we're following this Kilgrave plotline all the way basically till the end of it. And some of these things established in the first few episodes come back into it, but it stops being the private episode thing and it goes into this Kilgrave thing and that feels played out a little bit too long, stretched out too much. I wanted more of the private eye stuff. And so it felt... Uh, 
I, I just didn't like the way it all fit together. I didn't, it's not that I disliked the Kilgrave plotline and especially liked the way it tied into her backstory, her struggles, and the reason it happens, the ideas of control and manipulation, choice, all that's interesting to me. This, the, the, the actual way it was structured, the amount of time spent on the different things, how far we go down a certain, certain rabbit holes, that didn't quite work for me. And some of the side plot lines with a guy that's a love interest for someone that turns into, has a background with military type stuff and popping pills, kind of took an odd direction. There's a lot of things like that just kind of, kind of got odd and weird in the way some things played out. So I really liked the Jessica Jones character. And overall, I would say the season is very good, not quite moving into great category, category because it just the it just felt so stretched out to me the way it was structured, unfortunately. But a lot of really great stuff in there that I liked. And I could like it's the sort of one where I went, I'm really excited for season two. I'm really excited to see more of this. I just hope they get that structure of the season a little bit better for the next one. Moving into spot number three for me is going to be The Defenders. Now, I was really worried about The Defenders when the season started because the first episode to me seemed like a big misfire. So they're bringing four TV shows together into one. So you have to play catch up and kind of establish a bunch of things. And the way they chose to do that with this first episode was very odd to me. Like, hey, look, Matt Murdock's drinking coffee. Hey, look, Jessica Jones is at a bar drinking. And you're just seeing them in like day, day to day type stuff. Um, very dull. And then once it starts going, you get to episode two, it's like, all right, this is picking up a good bit. And then you get to episode three and it picks up quite a bit more and it goes going. It got to be what I wanted it to be. By about episode three, all the cast of characters get together. And maybe that's the way, a better way to phrase it. As soon as the characters really start getting together and interacting with each other, it got a lot better. Because before that, it just felt like I was watching little vignettes, little windows of 10 minutes of Luke Cage, 10 minutes of Daredevil, 10 minutes of Jessica Jones, 10 minutes of Iron Fist, kind of disconnected. And you're not sure how it's all going to play together. Um, and it's not like a plot line. And that's kind of the problem. It wasn't like an intriguing plot line where it's like, oh, Matt Murdock is trying to catch Wilson Fisk and battle him. And he discovers the hand. And it's not like that. It's just catching up on where he's at. It's catching up on Luke Cage getting out of prison, but it's not all of an intriguing plot line. And there's little elements that are sprinkled into it that later in the season you go, oh, I see how it all fits together. But the actual way as you're watching that first episode, it's like, okay, just day in the life. They're just looking into some stuff. What's Where's this headed? So that really frustrated me. That's all the negative. Now it gets going. And I, I had so much fun watching these characters come together and interact with each other. There was enough, enough humor in each one of them, the different ways they interpret all of this, whether it's Jessica Jones just wants nothing to do with it. So she's cracking jokes, whether that's Matt Murdock trying to keep his identity hidden. And so he's the only one trying to wear a costume where everyone else is like, what are you doing, you idiot? <laughs> and pick it on a little bit. Uh, Luke Cage just being so cool throughout the whole deal. Now Iron Fist is still the weak point in all of this to me, the actor still seems miscast and the whininess, impulsiveness, bad decision making, all that's still here, unfortunately. But the material elevates him. He's better in this. He gets a plot pot spot in the team that makes sense. This TV show handles his mythology better because it ties into everything else. And so it elevates his show a little bit. It makes me want to rewatch his show for a lot of that type of stuff. Um, uh, but so just a lot of cool things going on. And I would say once this one gets past that first episode, this is the tightest season of all six of them that they, they didn't go for 13 episodes. They went for eight. And so it's structured really nicely. Even bad guys, uh, out there through the different people's means, they come together to converge, to battle them. They discover them. They bicker back and forth as to whether we want to do this. And then eventually they go into a final showdown with the characters. It's so much so that I've heard a lot of people rumblings and comment sections, people saying maybe this show just should have been like a two and a half hour, three hour movie instead of an eight episode series, which I hear that and I go, well, that sounds like a nice, tight, well-structured season to me is what I heard. And that's what it felt like to me once it got past that weird first episode. Um, so all those are really positive types, types of things, uh, how it worked out. It doesn't have the wow moments of the Daredevil seasons and even some Luke Cage and Jessica Jones where there's just some scenes, some dialogue, some action in those that were just like, wow, that was awesome. In this one, it's all kind of crammed into, uh, it, there's just not the wow moments like it was. There's some cool shots. They're all in the trailer though. There's not like better shots than the ones that are in the trailer, which pretty disappointed me a good bit. I was hoping 
I wasn't going to get all the money shots in the trailer. But overall, very solid show. Made me very excited for where they were going. It handled things really nicely. Could have used some wow moments. Iron Fist is still the weak spot. Overall, had a ton of fun seeing these characters come together, how they brought it together with the tightest season that I think that they have had yet. Sorry for the interruption. I wanted to talk about the single biggest thing you can do to support my channel, and that's to become one of my official patrons by supporting me financially directly on my Patreon page. If you do that, you get kind of special influence into my page in that I ask my patrons every month, what movie would they like me to review? What subject do they want me to address in a video? And essentially they get a personalized video made directly for them each month. I also give them special influence into my future projects I'm working on, give them shout outs, and like in this video right here, I put a list to their names up on the screen because I want to support their channels as well. So if you'd be willing to support my channel because you're a big fan of what we're doing and you want me to continue doing this, please consider supporting me on Patreon. With all that said, let's continue. Coming in at number two for me is going to be Daredevil Season 1, the one that kicked off this whole deal and they kicked off with a bang and just right out of the gate they established that all, for almost all these shows, the casting's excellent. Iron Fist being the exception, but the casting just here, like, I don't know who Charlie Cox is uh, prior to this. I hadn't seen any Boardwalk Empire, Stardust, any of the stuff he'd been in before. And I watched this, I go, like, this guy is so good. He's so perfectly cast in this. In the, just like his interactions with people um, as a blind guy, and you're like, you buy that this is a blind guy. He pulls off the physicality, and obviously he wears a mask during most of it so they can switch into Stuntman, but they pull all that off. It works so seamlessly and perfectly. Um, or they're obviously Wilson Fisk with Vincent D'Onofrio of bringing in kind of this A-list, Oscar-level actor to be the main villain in here and just being terrifying and being this nuanced performance that's so Vincent D'Onofrio, so Wilson Fisk. And this that sort of casting is in, like I said, in so many of these shows, whether that's, like I said, A-lister that I've heard of or... Charlie Cox that I have, and, and that's the whole cast of the whole show throughout the whole thing. And they kicked it off with a bang also by going with Wilson Fisk as this mastermind that you understand where he's coming from and you, you, what he's trying to do here, but he's also obviously evil and obviously broken and so violent. And so just so cool in the way it kicks things off. And then you're, you see it as a TV show and you know it's gonna be a fight show and you're like, eh, how good is this gonna be? And the fights are excellent. And several of them are just kind of wow type sequences that are points of reference for discussion about movies and TV shows. When you talk about fight choreography and single long takes, you say that whole fight scene in episode two of season one of Daredevil because it's so long, single take, and so cool in what they were able to do in that fight scene, and with great choreography, shot with enough distance so that you can see what's going on, and that's kind of the whole season. That one fight scene is the long one that's just crazy, but the whole season has great fight choreography that's handled nicely, and uh, even just kind of the artistic side to it. There's some people, there's some of the fights in it are kind of in the dark a little bit and the coloring's a little bit off, but it's all done in a way that looks cool. And it doesn't, it's not just hiding stuntmen and the choreography. It's done because it actually looks really cool in some of this. There's like a scene where Daredevil's fighting a ninja in one of the episodes and there's all sorts of cool lighting stuff in the way it's handled, but it, it just looks awesome. So they kicked things off with a bang, uh, did a great job. The only kind of negative is the season kind of feels like it meandered a little bit in the midsection. That's uh, kind of happens with a lot of these. It feels like at a certain point in time, they just start losing their way a little bit. And this one kind of also set the pace for that, but all, a great season. I love this one, debated having it number one. But my number one season is gonna be Daredevil season two. I felt to me that they took everything that worked in season one and took it to the next level perhaps there's not a main villain that's as strong as Wilson Fisk, but Wilson Fisk even gets some appearances in here. There's some stuff that happens with him. So that would be the only thing that I wouldn't say is as good. Beyond that, like the story with Matt Murdock and his struggle to be Matt Murdock and the Devil of Hell's Kitchen, I thought that worked great. The way, the interactions with him and Karen and Foggy and trying to uh, get him to be more reasonable or them being confused as what what is going on with him, I thought all that worked great. And then just the obvious one, the inclusion of the Punisher and just knocking it out of the park with what they did with him. And so I, like the first time I watched through it, I mean, the thing that just kind of blew me away is that 
It's not just that there's cool action scenes with the Punisher and the brutality of it, but you like the scenes where he's sitting down and not sit, just sitting down, the scenes where he's got Daredevil chained up and they're just talking about their philosophies. And it's intriguing and it's fascinating. And then he tells his story uh, about his family and stuff. And it's just and fascinating, intriguing, and, and the dialogue's so nicely crafted. And there's a scene later in the season where uh, he's sitting out with Karen in, in a diner just talking about relationships. And you're like, why is this so good? Why is, uh, why is Punisher so good at having this conversation? I mean, just John Berthold nails it. The writers nailed it. And just an incredible job with it. Like this, along the same lines, we got the hand coming in. It's you get Daredevil having more amazing fight scenes, jam packed with ninjas um, in multiple scenes, and just so cool, so nicely handled in sway. So much of that happens. Electra shows up. And so she's killing people, doing amazing stuff too. Sticks back. This incredible character that we've seen in, now in, I guess, three of the different seasons here. And so just all out so many cool things that I absolutely love. Now I would use the same issue I had with uh, Daredevil season one that it kind of meanders. It, the first four episodes are kind of this Punisher tracking down the mob plot line. And then it, once we get back through that and the Punisher is like on trial and in prison and suddenly the plot shifts towards uh, the uh, Daredevil with Elektra and the hand and it kind of goes in a different direction. It kind of meanders a little bit. Like, like I said, with all of these except the Defenders, I think that I would say that the plot line meanders and goes off funky at a certain point in time. But beyond that, the highs are just so high to me. Uh, I mean, some of my favorite TV show, TV of 2006, favorite TV of the last few years, favorite scenes, favorite fight scenes, all in Daredevil Season 2. I absolutely loved Daredevil Season 2. Such a cool one. Made me so pumped about a Punisher TV show, more uh, Daredevil. Uh, even more, that's probably even why the Defenders got that number three spot. Just he gets the boost from having more Daredevil in it. I uh, love the side characters, everything about it. Just so cool. But anyway, that's my list. How about you? Tell me your thoughts down below in the comment section. I don't want to just rank these uh, myself. I want to rank them with you. Get some discussion going. I know there's a lot of strong opinions about these shows. So let's have it nice and lively down in the comment section. With all that said, if you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I do movie reviews, ranking videos, just like the one you're watching right now. Now, but I don't want to just talk about TV shows. I want to talk about TV shows with you. So join me in the comment section and thank you for watching.